Check, 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 check. All right, sounds good to me. Welcome back to the Side by Side Guys Off-Road Podcast. I'm Big Z, and we're back in the Rugged Experience trailer here at UTV Takeover 2021 in Waynoka, Oklahoma. And I'm joined with special guest Brian Crower, uh, an industry standard for performance in the tuner world and even the domestic stuff uh, and uh, some of the bigger motors, and more recently into the UTV scene. So uh, excited to meet you and see uh, kind of the products you've brought to the table in the UTV world. It's kind of impressive what, you know, we, we're evolving this industry over the last 10 years of just little farm machines to now being, you know, high horsepower monsters. So I'm excited to have you on the show and talk to you about what you're doing. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, and, and how we got here. Thanks for having me, Zach. Uh, yeah, it's great to be here in uh, Wainoka. Um, good, uh, educated crowd asking the right questions. Um, started, uh, you know, when I was a kid and grew up in a machine shop at Crower Cams and, uh, you know, Built a sport compact side of, the, uh, of that company and then, uh, you know, was getting a little bit uh, conflicting with the V8 domestic stuff. So, you know, with the blessings of the of the higher ups, being <laughs> my dad and aunts and uncles, we kind of spun off and did the Toyotas, Mitsubishi, Subarus, Nissans, that, that kind of stuff. And then, uh, you know, probably about two years ago, we were seeing... Uh, um, the the performance on the side by side it was it wasn't there yet but uh, you know we were getting calls on cams and, and things like that and and then the 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 light bulb went off on on UTV when they rebadged it side by side and when that happened I started seeing ads from Talon and Polaris and they were saying you know ride side by side. And, and to me, that meant bringing the wife on board. And, you know, if the, <laughs> if the wife comes on board and right. says it's okay, then the credit card comes out and then, you know, we can start going faster. And so that, that was kind of the, the whole spark. And, and then, you know, one of, one, of the, one of our local engine builders in San Diego, which is where we're from, is uh, he came in with, you know, with some XP1000 cams and said, hey, you know, you should look into, you know, doing this. And, and you know, that kind of went off now obviously the xp 1000 is low on the totem pole but uh you know it kind of set the stage to get into the xp turbo the can ams you know even the yxz's and and now we're doing everything you know we're, we've got cams for the talent coming out in a, in a couple weeks um you know all the you know the x3 cams are coming out this week uh turbo cams so you know and we just jumped all in and, and you know what what we do is cams valve train which includes you know springs retainers valves guides you know, keepers, and then also the strokers and the rods and the pistons. And, and, you know, so we work with our partners, you know, whether it's BME pistons, CP pistons, JE pistons, um, you know, we're, we're and, and, you know, what was interesting was, uh, you know, in, in 2019, we, we kind of cruised the PRI show. And because of my background in the V8 world, you know, we, we, I have a lot of friends in, in the industry. And, you know, we were, we were kind of approaching them with this UTV, you know, idea right and they weren't really feeling it they, right. you know and and it was like me you know when 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 i first heard utv i thought it was the john deere right kind of platform right. and you know with the bed you know in the back sport and, uti not even in sport utility, UTV, just utility utility vehicle you know yeah, yeah. And, and and it wasn't dawning on me that you know and i know the 800s and the 900s were out but you know i mean let's be honest we're we're way beyond where we're they no were longer in 900 in yeah we, we're you know i mean they're making 650 to the crank on X3s now, you know, right. that was unheard of. And now people are just talking like, I want to go 800. And, you know, a year ago, people would have thought you're, you're crazy. You know, right. you're, there's no way you're going to make 800 out on of a three cylinder thing, you know, <laughs> at a 900 CC. And, and, uh, and here we are, you know, we're, we're that close. And, and so, um, yeah, the, the, you know, the whole, so, so now going back to the V8 companies, now they're calling us saying, Hey, how do we get in? Right. You know, and it's, and it's happened, you know, I mean, that was a couple of years ago and, uh, but you're seeing the performance side. So, you know, the, the, the old adage is, is, you know, you you buy a UTV, you put wheels, tires, roll seats, cage. Yeah. roll cage, you know, and I think we're at that point now, you know, they're, they're, it's mature enough. Can-Am 17, XPT 16, you know, and let's be honest, those two platforms, the Razor Turbo and the, and the Can-Am X3, that probably encompasses 85% of the cars right. out here, you know? Right. And uh, that's nothing against the Yamahas and the Hondas and even the Kawasaki, but, um, 
it's just it's factory. You're turbo. always going to have different levels of players, exactly. and they're already established players. Right. And yeah. uh, and so you know the, those are the the two big fish, and and you know now it's become a performance thing, and and you know the 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 wheels are on, the the, the seats are in, and, and you right. know the cage is there, and now they just want to go faster, you know, right. and. and um, obviously, the trail guys, they don't need 400 horsepower. You know, they're <laughs> well, going to wrap it some around of the us tree. Do, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> not the majority. Yeah. We're gonna have, we'll have them sign the waiver when they want to go about <laughs> yeah. 400, you know. But, uh, yeah, the, it's the dune guys. You know, those are the, right. those are the, that's where the, that's where the horsepower is. And, and, you know, we, we joke around, but, you know, like I said, when the, you go out in the dunes and as soon as you get blown away, yeah. you're on the phone on Monday saying, how do I go faster? Right. Or and, at that time that you get stuck on a side hill because you didn't have the power to keep going. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And, and, you know, and, and, you know, we're also selling the reliability aspect of, of the engines and, and, you know, we're trying to, you know, bring some V8 mentality to this segment and, uh, and kind of do it the right way. And, you know, people can say, well, you know, wow, it's, you know, 15 grand for a whole built motor, but that, that one built motor might last you five seasons. Right. You know? and, and, well, and people don't realize that when you're buying one of these side-by-sides, the majority of your money is going into the drivetrain, like the, the tube chassis and the, the brake calibers, like those don't really cost a whole lot in the big picture. Right. It's the motor and the drivetrain and the tranny and the diffs. And, and that's where all the money's at. And so when you say 15 grand, yeah, that's 75% of the purchase you did or more. That's what you're buying. Right. Exactly. And, and, you know, we're trying to sell the whole package. You know, we're working together with, with STM clutches and KWI and, and, you know, we're, we're trying to, you know, cause you can make all the power you want, but if you can't put it to the ground, you know, we're, we're, you know, and especially with the CVTs, right. You know, there's that, there's that fine kind of line of, of getting everything. You can't just throw everything at it and, and expect everything to, to click. And so we're at that point now where the power levels have gone so, uh, so high um, and the torque, you know, from the strokers and things like right. that. And, you know, everybody wants to run 60 pounds of boost and oh, I want to put nitrous <laughs> on it. And, right. you know, so, so we're really, we're really testing the boundaries of, of, of that power to ground ratio. And, and, um, and so, um, yeah, it, it's, it, it's, it's, it's great. What I love is, is, I mean, so, you know, imagine where I come from is, is, you know, we were doing 350 Chevys, small black Chevys, big black Chevys, small black Fords, for years, years, I'm talking like decades bread, bread of engines, of right? Family, so yeah. push rod motors and then the LS1. And then we do, you know, and then we kind of spin off when we're doing 2Js and, and Honda B-Series and K-Series and SR20s and each Subaru EJs and Mitsubishi 4G63s. All those engines have been discontinued for 20 plus years. Right. So you get in this kind of coast mode of, you know, you, there's really no, you know, the cam profile. You know, we know what works and, and you, you can't really kind of reinvent anything, you know. All of a sudden, this thing comes along, and I'm reinvigorated. Right. I'm like, Fresh I'm up blood. at like four in the morning, you know, cruising Babbitts and seeing where everything's used, <laughs> right. and you know, using all the microfish or film or whatever. And uh, you know, I'm I'm like, uh, I'm geeked out on this, yeah. you know. And, and and we're on the ground floor of seeing these power levels increase, so it's really cool to to kind of be at that kind of at that kind of ground zero of right. this segment, you know. So I want to get into maybe some of those details. Uh, but first, let's talk a little bit about your history. You said, you know, you've been in the family. You've been working on this stuff since you were a kid. Uh, kind of explain to where your families come from and, and where the, pro, the the brand name came from and, and what you guys established yourself as. Yeah, so in, in 1955, Crower Cams was started. And that was Bruce Crower, my uncle, and then my dad, Dave. And, you know, it grew, it grew to 300 employee business and 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 that was an actual new milled cam or was that that was so it was so it was cams and then it evolved into well really it started with you know bruce made this ufab manifold which was this intake manifold that you could convert from six cylinder eight cylinder remember everything back then was right. flathead and yep. you know so um yeah he, he, so he started with that and then the cams came along and then he bruce is the one who designed the centrifugal clutch Oh, really? You know, with the fingers and the weights and, and uh, you know, that was really big in the drag racing scene. And, and then it evolved into, obviously, with the cams, you need valve train. And, and you know, the, one thing Crower's really known well for is their roller lifters and then their rocker arms. And, and so that's all the push rod based motors and, and uh you know, and then the LS1 with the Chevy and, and, and you know, the, all the Ford modular things. And, and, you know, so, you know, all those V8 platforms, you know, that that's all, you know, tried and true. And and in my mind, I'm always looking for new. Right. You know, even even when I was working there, where you know, in the early 90s, it was pretty interesting because, uh, 
you know, I went to school, business, marketing, you know, I didn't, you know, one thing my, I wanted to grind cams when I was a kid, you know, <laughs> right. and, my, and my dad's like, he's all look out there and, you know, and this is nothing against, you know, cam grinding is a, is a art, it's, it's art a skill, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, but you're standing in front of that machine for eight hours, right. you know? And, and so, you know, he's like, you're going to get bored doing that. I can, you know, I know how you are. And, and so, wait, so he, the high energy Brian's going to get bored standing behind a machine. Exactly. I can't yeah, imagine yeah, that. Right. <laughs> so, you know, and, and even, even, you know, wh whether it's a CNC or anything, you know, I mean the CNC operator, of course he's, a, he's a skilled technician, but you're, you're, you're basically removing parts and putting them back on and, and right. programming and things right. like that. But, uh, yeah, he, so, so, you know, I worked down there you know, as a kid and, and through high school. And then, you know, I, I went to San Diego state and I did my two years at GE. And then I was like, now what do I do? Right. You know? And, and I didn't really know. And, and, you know, I was just kind of quizzing him and, you know, my mom and, you know, my mom's like, you're going to go to college. I said, but I don't know. I don't, I don't want to be, know why. I, I don't, you know, what am I going to be an English major or what, you know, what am I going to do? And, and, you know, but back then it, it was, the Mac came out the, and, and so I was, uh, I kind of gravitated towards that whole art digital and, and, you know, I might be dating myself, but back in the day you use litho and you cut everything yep. out on exacto knives yep. and, and specked out type and UV process I, and everything. Exactly. And I was right in that crossover. And so I went back to San Diego state and they're teaching all the old school methods. And, and, you know, I got my, I, I got Crower to, to get a Mac and, and I just jumped right into, you know, back then it was, page maker then it was core <laughs> you know, Express. and then it was you know then it was photoshop and then illustrator right. and, and you know and, and so ba basically i built the whole catalog on, on a computer and that was all unheard of back in the early 90s right and so i'm button heads with my professors at san diego state saying you guys are teaching it wrong you know why am i sitting here spending hours drawing type when i can go bing yeah. bing bing print Beep, boop, bop, done and 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 so basically i kind of converted the whole san diego state art program into the digital age but uh but Crower was very, uh, you know, like they wanted, you know, and, and, and so, but after a while was like, I'm just sitting there laying out type. That was boring. Yeah. yeah I didn't want to do that, right. but, but I, I enjoyed the, the newness of it, you right. know, and the uniqueness of, yep. of the cutting edge and things like that. But really what I like to do is, is I like to just see, I think I have a pretty good pulse on what's coming. You know, and wh whether it was the early 90s in, in, in Sport Compact, and, and, and that's kind of how I got into the tech side of things was uh, in the early 90s, you know, I positioned my office down with the tech guy so I could hear what was going on, and I kept hearing him saying, we don't make anything for Hondas. And I'm not saying Honda bikes, I'm saying Honda cars, right, you know, right. B-Series. It was B-Series, the B16A VTEC was the, was the first hot rod Honda engine. And, um, and I, I was saying, well, we why can not? though, yeah. you know, we, why, why can't we? And, and so I said, give me all those calls, you know? And so all of a sudden it went from, I'm the, you Instead know, of saying marketing no, now guy. It's, now it's like, how could we, like, what would you look for? Well, why and, would we? and you know, it was, it was a pretty easy, you know, they wanted rods cause they were putting turbos on them. They wanted titanium retainers. And then it just evolved into, you know, from rods to, to, to retainers, to cams, to, to, oh, we can do them for this single cam, or, or there's a 4G63 from the Mitsubishi, or there's an SR20. Right. And it just blew up to 40% of the business. Right. And, um, you know, and, and you know, coming from old school, and that was kind of the, the one of the reasonings for the kind of the break off was, uh, you know, aunts, uncles were like, that's a lot of inventory. You know, we went from <laughs> a one cam Chevy to a four cam Subaru. Right. But it was, it was a big, chunk of the sales you know and, yeah. and so you know my dad's kind of like hey we want to kind of slow this thing down and but if you want to kind of you know zig right yeah we'll support go you, for and, it, you know and, and you so go. so that happened and then you know once we got up and running you know we just kind of came became separate and i i knew i didn't want to touch the push rod side of the you know the v8 market and right. and they didn't really have the tech guys to get into our side of the deal and and what's kind of ironic is is uh you know, about three years ago, they were kind of messing around trying to get into the YXZ market, but oh. they just they just didn't really hit it the right way. You know, they didn't go to any events. They, right. they just weren't getting out there. And and so that kind of died out. And, and you know, I think they were just three years too early. You yeah. know, so... Uh, so and that's, yeah. been a, that's been a huge thing in our market, right, is, is there's been industry leaders, but no one's recognized the fact that that even isn't a thing to be leading in, right? And so now we're starting to see the brands starting to recognize that there's not only money there, but there's actually enthusiasts there that are willing to stick with it for a long term. Right. And, and because this is, is such a new, you know, the performance side is, you know, I'd say if, if I had all the, all the stuff we had, the strokers, the cams, all the valve train, everything we're doing two years ago. 
I'd be sitting there with my thumb up my butt, you right. know, because it, it was just it was. Well, people the weren't indus- there yet. They were still in the in the tire stage, the seat stage. Well, that- there's also that need for competition, right? right? Like the the Polaris dominated the scene for so long, and right. it took some traction time for KM to build right. to then become the the kind of the, the de facto car on the dunes. Right. To then now have this huge sea of Polaris owners now wanting to keep you know keep up. And, and upgrade their systems. And then you have none of the Can-Am guys saying, I'm never going to let you get close to me. I'm going right. to always be <laughs> above you. Well, we, I mean, yeah, they, and it, it, is a, it is a Ford versus Chevy yep. mindset here. You know, you know, and, and, you know and, you, and you also throw, you know, I mean, I, I make a big point of, you know, the, the cars I notice. I mean, we notice the good Can-Am and the Razor builds and all that. But I, but I notice the talons, right. and I notice the YXZs yep. because I'm trying to, I'm trying to get this percentage of what is number three, you know, and and <laughs> right. and um, and so, uh, you know, but what we're doing, you know, like I said, we're we're jumping into all of them, and and there is no, you know, when we did the sport compact, you know, there there was the already the established JDM companies, the, the Junes and the HKSs and the Spoon Sports. And, and so we could kind of see what they were doing. And here there's nothing, you know. And, and so you got to walk the walk. I mean, right. it, you know, I, I haven't owned a Supra. I don't own a 2JZ, but we do a lot of parts for it. But I felt the need to go out and buy a Can-Am, a Turbo Razor, XP1000, a Talon. To fully understand to, to, it. To grasp everything that we're doing and, and to, to test and do it right and work with the right partners. And, you know, we, we work with, uh, you know, we, 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 you know, one thing I also did is, is I did some research on who, who's who, you know, and, and, and we're working with all of them. You yeah. know, I mean, the, the Can-Am is very tribal. And, and so you're either a whaling guy or you're an Evo guy. And, yep. and we're, I'd say, hey, we're Switzerland. We're in the middle. You know, we're neutral. We just <laughs> want to sell cams. And, I want that and hat. I want, you know, and, and basically, uh, you know, we want to work with all of them, you know. And, and, you know, for the Razor builds, you know, we got D&M. There's DW. I mean, there's K&T. I mean, there's a lot of established guys out there and and really it's like a bunch of banshee guys that that all <laughs> right. of a sudden you know upgraded <laughs> upgraded to you know and um and yeah it's 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 great working with those those guys they're they're very down to earth they've been doing it a long time and 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 now this thing's kind of segueing into you know the 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 big power market is always the sled guys, you know, and, right. and, and traditionally um, that's been where the development's been is in and, the mountains. And, and that's where, that's why I'm so intrigued by the, the YXZ because it's got that nine, nine, eight Genesis right. world platform motor and, and you know, it, what's in the Textron and then, you know, it's in every, you know, the sidewinders and the Vipers and, and all those sleds and, and uh, you know, those guys want to go fast too. And, and it, now you start in, you know, the one thing about, about UTV is it, it's a year round scene, you know, Right. Like even though we're in San Diego and we ride Glamis and Acatillo and all that, and it's 120 degrees there right now. <laughs> right now, and yeah. we're October is our you know October through you know February. May. You know, I mean, you could it just depends. Weather's kind of changing. It's not as hot, you know, but um, but while while we're on while we're in river season, um, you know, Michigan's going, Oregon's going, yep. you know, and, and so we're trying to figure out like you know the one thing we're. The one thing that uh, sells a lot of parts is the drag scene, right? You know, and whether it's sand drags, and and now that now we're getting into the street drags, everybody's getting into asphalt and and all that. And the way the way I envi- you know, I try and explain this whole side by side segment to people as they say, yeah, I, I see what's going on now is 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 great and it's growing, but I see. The, the these chassis is becoming a default racing oh, platform yeah. mm-hmm. where they'll be re- using these these chassis and and the bodies are irrelevant but they'll be using these chassis and engine combinations on circle track racing yep. you know and we're already seeing it evolve into the asphalt drag racing and and let's face it the 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 whole drag strips are closing every week you know yeah. and it's sad and and uh and the reason is is there's no car counts you know and the car counts getting less and a lot of it is uh, is uh you know excuse my friends but it's the fucking epa is is killing these you know they, right. they want to pass laws where you know you can't even take a, a production car and make it a race car anymore right you know yeah, well they're taking the abil- the simplicity away it's so much more complicated now that diving they're into just, something. Big is, government is just kind of. I mean, and well, I it, don't. I mean, any you know the illegal street racing that's got to stop. You know yeah. that's dangerous, and and I don't endorse that at all. But but when you're on a on a on a professional, you know, on a on a drag strip, you know, you should be able to run whatever car you want. Right. You know, and and yeah. you know, it's it's just uh, it's so anyway. The, the, that's a whole different. 
but I mean, the podcast, platform itself but, uh, is, is is so simple. In, this, my perspective is so simple in nature. Exactly. That this, the more simple you can make something, the more reliable, more more you can do with it. And I think that that's why people gravitate to it. Is that oh, I understand exactly what that is because I can look at it and I know how it's going to work and why it works. And now I can start moving forward with my ideas and my right. inspirations and make this thing a beast. Yeah, and and, and you know, so so you you've you've got the it, it's becoming homogenous where mm-hmm. you know you basically you want to build a a sand drag a turbo sand drag car you, you i mean r- right now you you pretty much have can-am you know right. i mean you want to build a high horsepower 400 plus car you got to go can-am it but that's why the yxz guys would would argue with uh, you but sorry <laughs> sorry chad and, and all the packer guys and kt and all that and, but what we want to do is get people off the z1 you know right. we want to we want to i mean in my mind a real drag series you have to kind of stay you know, and I'm all for innovation, and, and, and I mean the 2JB, 2JP Razor is here, yeah. and it's got our three-four stroker in it for the 2J, and you know, I mean, the internet is is what it is. It's good and bad, <laughs> right. and and you know, I like that they're pushing the envelope. When they when they, it just so happened a couple years ago they wanted to pursue this project, and it was right when we were getting into the whole side by side thing, and I was like, a 2JZ and a Razor, I'm all in. You right. know, what do you guys need? And we sent them crank rods cams valve train and and you know i mean that thing moves the needle pretty good i mean is it going to sell 2jz parts to a (laughs) super guy probably not is it going to sell razor parts to a razor guy i don't know but does it do people talk about it right of course you know i'm a big all publicity is good publicity and so (laughs) um but anyway we want the innovation we want the billet cases you know i mean i'm not a big rules guy i don't know where the Polaris is going to fit in with their new two liter. You know, I don't know how that class is going to, you know, what happens in racing on that. And I don't know what Can-Am's got in store, but uh, yeah, I mean, you know, but we want, I, my goal is to, is to make the Polaris guys faster than the Can-Am and then the Can-Am guys faster. And then it just feeds off each other right. and you go from there. And, the, you know, that's why we're working so hard with the, with the, on the Polaris platform. You know, we had King make oversized bearings, you know, basically we're, we're you know, we want to, we want to, make 500 horsepower reliable razor turbo motors right. you know and, and that's that's the goal and and um you know the, the can-am guys the joke is 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 you know the the razor guys need us the can-am guys just want to go faster you right. know and 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 um you know so and, and then like i said you got the you do have the 998 guys and and uh so, it, the, so the, the segments it's just it's it's really cool seeing it just grow in front of your Right, front of your eyes. So let's talk a little bit about the actual uh, consumer side of how to approach all of this, right? Like we have been talking about uh, high horsepower and big cranks and and all the stuff that you can put into these blocks, right? Uh, but let's let's talk about the guy that has, which is what I would say the largest part of the market. The guy that has the car for the last three years, four years, whatever it is. He went out tried to compete with his buddies on the sand dunes for the night ride, right. and and went off a lip and then throttled into a dead stop and blew something and did something to his motor. Now he has to reevaluate his situation, right? Like. How does he then approach the idea of I have components inside my motor? Which one should I be looking at first? Well, so so let's just talk can like let's just say cams. Let's, let's just say a guy's played out his. I mean, because if he if if he blows up a motor, let's just say that happens. Okay. Um, you know, he's got some options. He can, you know, if it's under warranty, if it's all stock, he can obviously address it with the factory. Um, if it's out of warranty. You know, now he's got some decisions, or she's got some decisions to make. Um, do I just replace it with another stock motor, or do I like how do how, I put a stroker kit in it? You right, know, like and how can we say, okay, you want to, you have to put money into this anyways, right? Right. How do we put in some extra reliability and power all at the same time without going extreme one way or the other? So let's, I mean, and, and it, it, there's different scenarios for different engines, but let's just so, talk Can Am. So the Can-Am guys, I mean, Can-Am's a really reliable motor, and, and, and you know, basically, the, we look at it like the Can-Ams are the money guys, and, and they want to go fast, right. you know, and they bought that car for a reason. And, right. and so, and I'm not saying everybody. A lot of people are happy, bone stock, and, and that's great. Um, but the, you, got, you got the different tiers. You got the guy that, so he buys the Can-Am, and, and you know, he's, he's run it, and then, he, you know, he loses a roll race or whatever happens and he wants to go a little bit faster but he's not ready to break the bank my wife's not on board right. whatever the scenario is 
we have a drop-in cam. 20 horsepower gain with a tune, don't have to change the springs, don't have to take the engine out of the car, nothing. So you're literally just pulling the cam, pulling, popping it pulling in. Pulling them out, then... it's a remove and replace, don't have to do anything else. You know, remote tune, whatever, you know, flash into your stock ECU, whether you're running a standalone, that doesn't matter. And then it's a, it's a so basically how we see it playing out is, is and how it does play out is it, it, nobody goes from mild to wild. Nobody goes from <laughs> stock to 500 right. horsepower. There's a gradual progression, and, and whether there's a, a something broke in between to, to as a catalyst, or they just they, they just want to go faster. So they'll they'll do the drop in cams, and that's great for a, a couple. You know, maybe it's great for a whole season. You know, right. and then all of a sudden everybody's catching up. But how know? does how does that impact it? Are you now looking at your motors being a little starved? Is it needing more compression? Like how does it work? Towards- yeah, it, it's a it, I mean, we're guys, you know, and we want to go faster. And it's just, you know, the 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 one thing that's pretty much re- recession proof is is booze, sex, and perform or you know high performance, high <laughs> right. rotting. You know, right. I mean, the, the, those those pretty much are go all hand in hand. You know, you, you you I don't care what. I mean, I started my business in 2007. That was when the world was going to end financially, right, you know, right. and, and it, everything took off. And, and so, um, you know, COVID hit. We had a we had a great year. I mean, I, I feel sorry for restaurant business and hospitality and everybody got, got screwed by COVID. But our business went up and, and the whole performance business went up if you had the inventory. You right. know, if if right. if everything was was, uh, you know, and, and that's what it is now. And, and you, you bring so back to your your question is where do you go? So. You go, you blow up your motor. Let's just say it hits a fan. You blow up your motor. Um, now what do you do? Do you right. do you buy a stock crank? Do you, you know, do you do you just go through that to to that point? A lot of people are like, I'm not going. I, I got burned by that. I know where I'm at. I, you know, maybe they got a bigger turbo, different tune, ran higher. You know, whatever whatever happened. So they. Maybe they, they get to our site and they're like, well, I could get a stroker kit for my Can-Am or, or Razor or whatever. They don't want to call up in here 16 weeks. Right. They want to hear, I can ship it. I'll, I'll balance, you know, what Bob, you know, we go through all the details. I've got stroker pistons in stock. I've got cranks in stock, rods in stock. I can ship a stroker kit same day. So that's, that's the difference is, is to say, or let, let's say the guy says, I'm just going to go stock. He, he calls Can-Am or... Polaris and they're back and they're six, eight, ten months they're out. They're back ordered, or they're going to so, say who knows when. Yeah. So you guys mill and 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 build your your components here in the states, right? You have your own facilities. Correct. I mean, we so we set up so we have a U.S. facility and we have global supply chain facilities. You do and a we, lot of overseas sales too. We do, and um, you know, we're I mean, in this market, you know, I mean. There, Nobody has more sand than the Middle East, you know, and, and you know, oil prices are up. So, so they're, they, they want to go faster, too. And, and um, you know, but we get calls from France and, you know, I mean, Mexico is huge for this segment, you know. And, and so, yeah, we, we, we like the uh, I mean, obviously, international is good. I mean, you know, nothing beats, you know, we're kind of in the we're spoiled because we're two hours from Glamis. Right. And so, you know, that's kind of our, you know, our scene like, you know, I was. Which doesn't hurt business. I mean, that's what you do. So I mean, it's interesting. I and but there's you know Idaho is big. Yep. I mean, you know when when we first got into this, I was getting a lot of calls from Utah, and I was like, whoa, you know. But it's really where the dunes are, you know. Right. And, and and you know, obviously we're sorry, we're, all you trail guys. We're no, 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 no. no. And, <laughs> we and, we and, talk know, about we, the dunes you know, all the time. You know, we, we got involved in the, in the in in works, and then you know the all the. You know the Baja. You know, basically, we, we want to be in all genres of, of racing to prove the the product. And you know, our being where we're at, I grew up in San Diego. I mean, Baja is is it's kind huge. of the the, the proving yeah. ground. You know, right. and, and if you can do a thousand miles or five hundred miles uh, through that environment, um, you know, you, you've established your yourself. And and so you know, we, we but you know, I mean, after seeing it, you know, we did the short course. You know, we're, we we've got guys in in uh Texplex running running that series mid-america um you know works um you know best in the desert but and and that's that's all good but there's a limited 
there's only X amount of racers, <laughs> right. you know, that, that race. Profe- right. I mean, I don't want to say professional, but they're just they're, racers they're, they're, in general. That's still not as big as the, the rest the of the big, world. The masses are the dudes at the dunes. All these all these people right. out here, these folks, these are these are who we want to 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 cater to. And, and um, you know, just, you know, it's it's not it's Friday and. and you know, we've already I, – I, I gauge an event by not necessarily the amount of people, but by the, the intelligence of the questions. And then right. that's, that's, you know, I mean, I, I see people, people walk by, and they, they see the crank, and it's just they, – they don't know because they've never experienced Looks rod cool. failure or yeah. <laughs> whatever, you know, and, and, and that's fine. But you get other people, and they're like, it's just, you know, just blew up my – you know, right. razor, you know, what, what, what do you got for I me? You know? <laughs> exactly. So, so, you know, the, the, the and it, you know, nowadays everybody's, everybody's got the Amazon mentality of, of, you know, a, you took my credit card and where's my tracking number, right. you know? And so, uh, I mean, we're making stroker kits, but the nice thing is, is, is the, the two popular platforms, the, you know, the razor turbo and the X3, it, it's basically 93 bore on the Polaris, 74 bore on the Can-Am or maybe 75 if they're sleeving the block. And it's all, we're, we're going 10 to one now. And, and we're going 10 to one because a lot of, everybody wants to run E85 now. Um, and if you're like, oh, I want to run race gas and I want a little, little lower compression, you're like, run this 50 thou head gasket. And so we've, we've basically got our piston deal down. Now we have one bob weight. So we have the cranks all balanced, ready to go. Um, you know, and I could ship a stroker kit that day and, and that's what people want. That'll make the decision easier. Yeah. It might be $1,500 more than buying all the stock stuff, right. but you're going to, you know, on a, on a razor, you're going to, you're going to go from 925 CC to 986 on the Can-Am. You're going to go from 900 to 974 CC, um, you know, for, for an extra whatever. And you're, 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 you're buying the reliability, you're buying the performance. I mean, the biggest complaint about the turbo guys is, I got turbo lag. Well, the stroker, I mean, on the Can-Am, we did testing. To get to 52 PSI on a stock stroke, had to go to 5,500 RPM. To get to right. 52 PSI with the stroker, you had to go to 3,200 RPM. I was say threes, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so you're building the boost that much faster, um, you know, which is, that's the wow factor. You know, that puts the smile on everybody's face, and, and um, you know, that's what we want. But uh, they don't, again, you, you can't tell them 16 weeks. You know, and, and so that's the whole goal is to is to have all, you know, I, I want to end. You're going to be happier, right? Like just because you put stock in there, it makes you feel good because you that you you experience the thing that you bought. Right. But when you put in something with more reliability, sleeping at night's going to be better. And when you have more performance, your right. experience is going to be better. And all around, you're going to be a happier buyer at that point. Well, yeah, just just I mean, going back to stocks, just like kissing your sister. You know, there's really not <laughs> you know, there's really not a lot going on there, you know, so um you know, we, you're going to get all of the above, you know, when you go aftermarket and, and, and we just want to make it very, uh, the other thing in this segment is because it's new, um, a lot of people want turnkey, like we didn't really plan on building engines, but now we are building engines because oh, people okay. are like, well, if I buy the stroker kit, can you put it together? If, you know, or, or right. if we're going to line bore the razor case and put bigger bearings in it, can you guys just blueprint the crank and everything? And, and, and so that's become where, you know, we've, we've basically building this giant R and D facility, but it's also going to have, um, a, a engine building capabilities. And, right. and we, but we, we, that's not the angle that we want to go. I mean, that's it's not just, your focus, but you have to be able to kind of facilitate well, some of that stuff. Uh, what the one thing is, is like I said, is it's, it's going to be very limited. I mean, we, you know, we've, we've got our engine builders out there that, that we want to push, you know, right. and, and, uh, and but, I think people but, ask that because locally they don't normally have talent that understands all that. Right. Like we can sit here and listen to you talk, spit off numbers and models and bores and, 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 and you're confident in that. And, but for the large majority of, of rural area, America, they're not having that person down the street, right? So they're looking for builders like that. Right. And, and the nice thing about these engines is they're just aluminum cases and they're easy to ship. Right. You know, as long as they're packaged right and the UPS guys don't chuck it around too much. But, uh, um, yeah, it's, it, and, 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 you know, there's, there's money in, in this segment. People, I mean, this, these are, 
I don't know. I don't really know how to explain it. These are their kind of their babies. This is their. To- right. I mean, I don't want to say toy because that's kind of an insult. Well, like but, I said before, but it's, it's the car club. hobby. It's you the know? car club culture evolved. Right, and and for them to 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 dump you know whatever you know thirty five hundred into a stroker is not a big ask. You know, and especially if they want to turn up the boost or or you know whatever. And and, and you know maybe maybe the car is a seventeen. It's paid off. Um, whatever what next, it doesn't right? it doesn't you know that's irrelevant you know i mean i've i've had guys even yesterday brand new 21 can am hey i want to put a stroker can in what, what happened to your motor nothing <laughs> you know well, why, is there, why well, does there well, need well, to be a reason? No reason you know and, and so uh, i mean i think that's great that that people are that willing and you know they're what they want is and and that's why we're you know Again, we come back to the to the the partners in the V8 world, like Darton, you know, with uh, with sleeving, and and you know, we want to we want to bring in all these. So normally, I don't do I don't get into the turbos and, and that kind of thing and the block External sleeving and all block. that. But people, when they're buying a crank, they're like, hey, well, where can I get it sleeved? And then or I'm which like, one well, do you I, recommend to go so, with it? So or? I'm actually having like cylinder support systems is doing a closed deck um, Can Am cases for, and I'm going to have ten of them on the shelf. You know, because that's what people want. And again, right. they don't want to hear, you know, or, or Golden Eagle, you know, sleeving blocks. And, and uh, they don't want to hear 12 weeks, though. Right. And, and what, what good is it if I have a stroker kit? I can ship you the same day, but your block's going to take 12 weeks. Right. That does you no good. Right. So that loses, that loses my crank sale, my rod sale. want to keep the momentum rolling. I want to just be able to say. And then, and then usually it comes down to, okay, so, and then we have CNC heads with all the cams and valve train in it. And then, and then after all that, the guy's like, well, can you guys build it? And I'll say, well, you know, you could call DNM or KT or Evo or, or, you know, any one of them. Yeah. Hanson, you name it. I mean, there's plenty, I mean, there's plenty of guys that we deal with, left some out, but, um, yeah, you, but to learn, you have to get into the engine, you, have to get you know, and that's yeah. that's where it comes back to walking the walk. You, there, companies say, "Hey, we want to get in," and I say, "Well, how bad do you want to get in? Are you going to buy a car? Right? Or, you know, are you going to go out to the scene and see what's going on? Because I don't want to hold your hand too much. Because right. once I get you going, you see how big this is. You know, you're off and running, and right. and you know. But uh, I'm willing to help people out if they want to get in, and and I think it's exciting, and and I'm. You know, I, I brought, you know, one of our biggest uh, dealers in the Sport Compact is Real Street. And for a year, I've been bugging them. Hey, you, you should look into getting into this market. You should look. Sure enough, man, they jumped in big. And uh, and they're all in. And, and nice thing about them is is they kind of cover all all platforms. And, and, they're and all start, the angles, all the different components. Yeah, you know, suspension, you know, things that we don't get into. And, and um, you know, I, I was telling them, you know, uh, events like this where there's – this is why I like the takeover events is because it's actually – you can actually – like in Oregon, we were set up to do installs. We were putting Garrett intercoolers in. We were putting valve covers in. We were putting MSD coils in. And people were digging it because they could go out and use it. Right. You know, and that, right. that's what's cool. It's kind of a testing or an install. And, you know, you buy it, you it's install like it, and tune. you go out and yeah. run it. It's, just, it's a testing tune. And so people were, they were digging that. And, and it brought a lot of uh, traffic to the booth because, you know, it's kind of like people are like, well, hey, what's going on? Right. You know, and, and so it was really cool. And, and so we, we want to do more of that. But, but it, you know, a lot of it is, is I, I, I broke my suspension bowl or you know right. whatever you know and, and we are working with arp on bringing that kind of hardware to market but um that's actually you know, an underserved market is the quality connection point well i mean it's like you know we're looking at the cage bolts we're like so you buy a fifty five hundred dollar roll cage and you're putting the home depot bolts back in it <laughs> right you know the grade eights you know yeah. and so we went you know we went to arp we said hey you need to you know you need to make these stainless steel bolts and and you know that's that's starting to catch on i mean arp is known more for head studs and engine right. parts but the accessory bolt is a, is a big market and you know we want to be you know, we want to be involved in that too because nobody's touched that. So, I mean, there, it's the the platforms are so is so new and and it's it's exciting and you know I want, you know, I want to get into everything, but I really want to focus on the engine stuff and making things faster and and uh, you know, so it's uh, yeah. I mean, you know, this event, you know, this is uh, this is great, you know, and and you know, Jim's over here and and uh, you know, we need to talk to him about you know setting up 
a, a drag <laughs> series and, and you know getting yeah. getting it we, going. We've talked a little bit about just the, yeah. how much we it, our events are growing, right? But the community itself is starting to understand the events more and, and understand why there's such a big draw and why you'd want to be here. Now, I wanted to kind of ask you your opinion. Now, I don't want you to talk a little bit about you know kind of the, some of the stuff you're under NDA to talk about or whatever. But you know, the future of our sport is looking at bigger motors, bigger power you know, those types of things. And we have these cars on these kind of like economical tube chassis and, and things like that. Uh, something I've talked about before is kind of what, what happens to these cars once it reaches that 250 horsepower stock or whatever, you know, should we, should we be looking at replacing the cages? Should the manufacturers be looking at upgrading the metal qualities, DOM thicknesses, things like that? Uh, are they able to hold that much power? When you're talking about throwing 400 or 500 horsepower into a, a chassis, uh, are you noticing any kind of compromises with these machines and, and where that industry is going to have to take it? Um, that's a really good question. But oh, the, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, really the... so. Really, the 400 plus horsepower guys are the drag guys, and you know we're talking 300 feet or going up a hill, and we're, we're pretty much talking straight line. So, uh, you know, it's, in terms of the, the horsepower and, and the and the chassis, I, I don't I don't see any issues with that. Um, what about know, the clutch, like the CVT? The, well, clutch. Th that that's what I was gonna. That's the the whole. Um, I don't want to say it's not uh, an Achilles heel, but it's it's the sticking point. I mean, but that's what we're that's what we're dealing with, right? You know, and and, and uh, you know, hate to, it's Razor Turbo and X3. That's that's right. the market, and because uh, we have the YZs I mean, that hey, have transmissions the, the, and the Talons, Talons have transmissions. The tranny, yeah, they're they're all you know, and and I mean that's pretty good. Yeah, you know, I mean that's pretty good, and and uh, I don't you know, uh, you know, even Robbie's speed cars back to CVT, you know, yep. and he started from scratch, so. Um, it's interesting, you know, the belt thing is, is definitely uh, Achilles heel. You know, it, the more power, you're, you know, it, it creates belt issues, you right. know, and, and, and you know, it, we're, is, is, and the more power also creates issues w w on the snout w as it's married to the to the clutch, and and so you know we're working like you know because we're seeing we're, guys that are putting now the braces into the clutching and stuff to keep them right. to true and and to stop the transmission from twisting on the block and no, and all that stuff. That's I mean, the next the next step is 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 working with the STMs and the KWIs on on an actual you know snout crank snout to clutch hub engagement. You know, and 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 get more into because uh, I mean, know. you've talked more about the motor side of stuff. Is the transmission side of it something that you're looking at, kind of investing time and research to build and well, build we are, up? We are. I mean, but I'm not gonna get. I want the I want the clutch guys to do their job, and we're gonna do our job on the crank side. And together, we we need. I mean, because the power is. I mean. Like I said, six fifty to the crank is is it's now a big number. <laughs> is now yeah. you know eight hundred is not unreasonable in in a few months. So we want to be ahead of it um, and, and you know be proactive on you know are, is that going to sell to the masses? No, but it, it, I'm a but big believer on sell on Sunday. <laughs> win, you know, yep. win on yep. Sunday, sell on Monday, and and and. If if our parts are, are are performing in 800 horsepower, they're great in 250. You right, know, it's, and it's, that's kind of where I was going with that earlier question about the average guy. He's not. I mean, he wants the speed. Right. He wants the performance. He's not really looking to push the boundaries and be bleeding edge and and all that. Right. He he wants to know that it's capable and it's solid and it's reliable and that's what he's investing his money. Well, in. that's so you know we can look at our sales and, and on any engine and we can say, oh, like the Can Am stage four cams, you know, with a CNC head and the proper tuning, 100 horsepower. Well, we're not going to sell as many of those cams, even though they made 100 horsepower. Right. We're going to sell way more stage twos, drop-ins that made 20. Right. Because that's what the mass is. Not everybody's going to pull their head, change the valve springs, right. get bigger valves, CNC their head, um, you know. So 
that's the that's the average guy, you know, and 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 there are, the stage two drop in cam will always be number one. I don't care what engine it is, two J, it doesn't matter, you know. It's always that so changing. Why, so why does the OE put their cam and their all that components at where they're at versus that ex, that extra twenty? Oh, well, again, it's a lot of of a lot of what the OEs have to do is 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 related to smog gotcha. and the EPA. So, so it, Polaris had to dumb down, you know, their exhaust side just for I mean, in a lot of it's California. It's California, yeah, I mean, right? You want to sell cars? That's why they California? have California versions of these cars? Exactly. Um, and and yeah. so they have to actually develop for that one, right. and then just kind of like take off some things and put it for the rest of the market. But the, but they're not gonna. You know they're not going to have a California cylinder head and a right. and a forty nine state cylinder head. You know so whatever. Um, so so what 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 was designed to work in California on the engines like the the part part side of the engine is in all the states. So right. so we I mean we go so we go plus three point eight millimeter on the exhaust side. That's how much we make the valve. The head bigger, Open bigger, yeah. And, and so when we do our CNC program, you know, we really hog out the exhaust side, and 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 that helps the Polaris out. Can Am, we go two millimeter on that one. Um, but yeah, it, a lot of what the OEs do is is it, it, you know, and they're mass produced. You know, I mean, I I don't know the exact number of like Razor turbos that are sold right. a year. I mean, I I hear, you know, they sell between all the XP engines combined. It's in the same amount of sales as F 150s a year. Yeah. I don't know. You know, a lot of, and, and then uh, 10 times that in Rangers. <laughs> correct. Well, no, I'm saying that whole, all of that combined oh, the, XP 1000s, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, all of that series, you know, I mean, it's, it's a big number. And, you know, all we want to do is capture just a little, little percentage of that. But, um, yeah, the, the, uh, so the OEs are, are, you know, they're concerned about, you know, cost, you know, mass, can it be mass produced? You know, they don't want to do too high performance. Um, but yeah, that, that that's our angle to come in. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. we we love seeing uh, we love seeing rod, you know, OE rods that are about the, the beams are as thin <laughs> as a pencil. <laughs> right. You know, and, and uh, I don't think people realize how economical those parts are in some of these OE machines when those when those pistons and arms and everything are are so narrow and thin. They're they're super lightweight for one. It's easy to tune that way because uh, you're not competing against centrifugal forces and all that junk. But uh, when you put a when you can put it next to one of yours, it's it's almost hilarious the the density difference between the yeah components. And, and and we we love the factories for doing that you know yeah. I mean every time you know I mean it would, if they if they built it I mean and, and that's that's what I tell people as I say look you know they're not going to build it indestructible it's so. like, you know Can Am you know we've seen the Can Am on stock crank and it can get to 350 400 without having a lot of issues on the on the bottom end. Um, the, the hydraulic DLC bucket is awesome. I mean, everybody was like, you know, we were like, oh, if we want to go, you know, first time we got the head, we're like, oh, it's a hydraulic. That's crazy. You know, Polaris is solid. What? YXE is solid. Um, you know, solid's kind of the more performance, uh, uh, low profile. But, uh, as we started pushing the Can-Am, you know, like I said, we 650 to the wheel or 650 to the crank. On a, on a stock hydraulic bucket, we're like, you know, we don't even need to pursue the, the right. solid side. Um, although people are running the hydraulic profile on a solid bucket is really aggressive. So it actually works really well. But really small percent, like really uh, we're talking about masses, you know, we want to sell cater mostly to the masses. There's not a lot of people that are convert to solid buckets, but um so yeah, the, the, when you guys are at the shop and you're you're talking about all this stuff, right? You you have to be dynoing, you have to be tearing these things down, building them back up. I mean, just to get, I mean, because a lot of people don't know who you are yet, right? Because mass sure. is is not in the performance game. But right. just to give some some qualification here, I mean, you're not just an automotive parts person that's jumping into a UTV market. You like you have these things torn apart, researched down oh, yeah. to the you know the thou and and everything. No, from the ground up. I we, mean, you're doing your research and your investment. Well, like I said, it, it, you know, this one is so new, you have to walk the walk. Yeah. You, you can't fake it. I mean, like I said, there there's V8 companies calling and saying, hey, we want to get into it. And and I got to gauge their level of interest. I mean, King Bearing is really proactive, wants to get in. ARP, really proactive, wants to get in it. Um, there's a lot of companies. Garrett, 
turbos, really proactive, wants to get in it. Um, you know, and, uh, they, and they it's understand. nice to see the quality vendors that are starting to understand. It's not just any guy on the street that has his stuff from China. It's like the American companies are starting to understand the mentality and the product and, and the future. Exactly. Of it. Well, yeah, and and it, it what what needs to happen is is and, and you know it's, it was the same thing in the in the early '90s with the Hondas. Everybody called we're calling them rice rockets and. You know, it was it, toys, you know, it was, it was derogatory. It wasn't, you know, first year at PRI when we had Honda camps, my, my dad was like, don't put those out on display. You know, we don't want the NASCAR guys right. or the NHRA guys to see that we're doing, you know, Hondas. And so it was almost like, hey, oh, you're a Honda guy? Come over here. You know, you know here's, here's the cams. Here's the good you know, stuff. <laughs> in, under, you know, in the, in the cabinet, you know. But uh, um, that, you know, what, once... And in an engine builder, same thing, you know, oh, we're not touching that overhead cam stuff, you know, and, but it's, it's, it's like, well, you know, the, the, the crate motors killed the V8 after, I mean, you know, when they started selling crate motors and racing series and they started trying to dumb down the racing series because it was cost, but really it was just, you know, whoever complains the, the, the most yeah. it usually wins. And, and so, you know, they started dumbing down the engines to where it was basically, a crate motor that you really couldn't do anything to. And and so these engine builders that were out there were like, well, now what do we do? And it's right. like, well, build these Hondas. Right. Build these 2Js. I mean, who cares? You know, and, and the same thing goes with, with, the, with this platform is they weren't taking it serious two years ago, but now it, it is getting serious. But you have to, you know, I, I felt the need to, to, to buy the cars, to, to – to to get a dyno, to create an R and D facility, to build the engines, to learn, you know, talk to all of the all of the guys in the in the industry before d deciding where to, you know, what what we needed. I mean, obviously, you know, we're, you know, we, we're, in in terms of stroke, you know, and and things like that, you know, but bore sizes, you know, how much did you get away with on a Polaris? without blowing the head gasket and how much boost was it and and you know all of those which kind is of funny things. because you have to blow something to know <laughs> failure is learning right you know and you 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 break something and you learn from it and and a, a, a good company that that's in it long term will fix that you know regardless of what what how, you know you you could say well that crank wasn't designed for that much power right that's on you well sure but but eventually that that power is going to be the norm i mean the, the, like a good example is our, our 2j rod you know i was looking at some some gram weights and and it's it's gone up 33 percent in weight in 15 years right because the power levels keep going everything up. else is increasing so if you don't evolve you, you know you're gonna you're you're gonna get passed over right you know and and, and so the same thing here i mean what we knew a year ago is different than what we know today, just in this Not market. Not irrelevant, just evolved. Just evolved, you know, and, and and you see trends, you see patterns, you see what works, what doesn't work, what people want, what kind of fuel they're going, what, what, what you know, tuning is a big, you know, tuning, if a tuning evolves, then everything else goes along with it. Right. So, so yeah. you've mentioned <clears throat> having fresh blood in the market as far as like, you're getting excited about this, right? Like this is something new and interesting. You have to work your brain cells to make this all come together, right? It's challenging. And so where we're at now, like you just said a year ago and, and where we're at t today um, and where um, kind of some perspective has come into play where we're going, what's getting you excited over the next year and, and couple years? Um, is it just bigger the, the, motors? The, well, the, is it just the fact that everybody's actually going to be playing ball I, and, and actually well, working think, together? Well, I think what's going to end up happening is 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 with this with this draggy uh, at, or uh, yep, package draggy, or whatever yeah. you know GPS deal. Um, that creates can, a culture too. You can you don't need a dyno. You don't need access to a dyno. And you can validate the parts like that, right? You know, um, and so. I think that's going to kind of shake things out to where um, you can't BS on your numbers, you know. <laughs> right. So, so that's that's going to be kind of the uh, that's gonna, what's going to happen in the next year. So you you have to be on your A game if if you if you want to push, you know, if you want to make power and, and gains, uh, at least on the engine side. I mean, we you know. You're gonna have to have quantitative um, you're gonna, results. You're, you're gonna well, I mean, and the internet's huge, and and so you know people, you know, we get it. I mean, a guy was talking to the other day is, is like, hey, I put put your stage two Can Am cams in, and and uh, I lost mile an hour on my draggy, and I was like, well, 
did you tune it? Well, no. <laughs> well, <laughs> right. there you go. You right. know, and so you know, a couple of days later, hey, everything's good. It was, it, and and he did that all on his own for a hundred right. bucks. I think those things right. are about that that cheap and uh, or inexpensive. And because well, uh, in, the, in the old days, you had to have a full system. It was like multiple thousands of dollars to be able to even read it. I mean, you had to schedule a dyno appointment and have everything go right. And you know, what is it? Is that dyno the same as that dyno? Was it a hundred degrees or what? You what know? elevation I mean, were you at? Exactly. And, yeah. and who, you know, so this is, uh, this is, uh, you know, th this is changing the game in terms of uh, validation. And, and so, like I said, we, and we don't want to, I mean, we work, uh, obviously, you know, we, we, we'll try something at our facility or one of our partners for dinos and, and we'll get the numbers and, and then, and then, but we'll, tr we, we'll try it on like five different right. cars. And, and then if we see, you know, like the stage two cams for the can amp, 20 horsepower on, on this dyno in Arizona, 20 on that one in Michigan, 20 on that one in Florida. Okay, so, you know, we, we, we got can a say good we average, have 20, yeah. We can say we, we have a 20 horsepower gain. Not, you know, hey, we ran it on our dyno. It was 60 degrees. We had a <laughs> air conditioning going on. the 30% you know, humidity. Exactly. We, you know, and, and uh, you know, so we want to, we want to, what sells the parts is everybody talking good about the parts. Yep. I can I can sit here and tell you, hey, buy our cams; they're the best. Right. Of course, you know. I mean, the, the one question I hate is, tell me why your cams are better than Brand X. And it's like I'm not gonna throw. I, I don't. I'm not a big trash talker. I'm not gonna. I don't need to trash them. Just g Google us. Yeah. Or whatever. Let the you product know? prove itself, you know? and the so, community will take care of the rest. And, and you know, we've been doing this a long time. I've been doing this a very long time. I've been had my own business for, you know, we're going on 15 years this year. So, I mean, we've done it enough to where, you know, I don't need to, you know, I don't need to beg you to run our stuff, you right. know, um, you know, we, and, and we, like I said, we, we want to, this segment, we're starting from basically scratch, you know, right. we, we could, we, you know, and we're first to market on the, on having the, the, Semi core camshaft. I mean, stock base circle. We can grind any spec. It's not a regrind. It's not a hard face. Um, you, you know, we, even re we, I didn't even know you guys could repair camshafts, but you guys. We, I mean, we can do. Yeah, we can. I, I, I mean, my mind. that that's. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's that's a whole. I mean, a whole that's a whole other podcast. I just was I mean, blown away by Well, the <laughs> I mean, a lot of the a lot of the it's 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 funny because like I said, uh, you know, one thing I I like to notice is what's going on and and uh, in in our you know our, I mean. The engine, hardcore engine segment is is very. I mean, you might think it's huge, you know, all these engines, but it's everybody, you know, community. you do it long enough, you, everybody knows everybody, and and you see what's going on in the market and and who's acquiring what and you know what's going on. And and one thing I noticed was a lot of the cam companies were getting away from that custom one-off. I'm talking right. like a guy sends him sends you a. Uh, a flathead cam or, or a Cummins diesel cam or, or, or whatever. And, and all you want to do is just, you know, Shave a just off. one cam <laughs> though, you know, not set up for a CNC, right. you know, and, and, you know, we, the CNC grinding is great. We do it on, on all of our production stuff, but the, the one-off stuff, the setup for the CNC is just, it takes too long to do one cam. And, well, then and you have to have the guy that for, knows how to do it. I mean, that's a pretty... Well, yeah, but it's really the setup that is the, you know, I mean, you got a Cummins cam that's like that. And, a, <laughs> right. and then, a, you know, Can-Am cam is that big. Yeah. And, and so, um, you know, it, so that was going away. So, so um, you know, I bought the Comp Cams was selling six Burko, you know, manual cam grinders and... I bought I bought them all and and uh, you know luckily the 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 Burko is a is a is an old school you know grinder but it's only as good as the operator right That's and so luckily if, you know from my Crower guys you know they, they were they retired but then <laughs> it's funny they're they're in their sixties they retired for, you know fifty years of cam grinding down there they retired and and then they figured out they didn't really like hanging out with their wives all the time. <laughs> so they were looking for, they wanted to go back to what they did. You yeah. know? And, and so I said, Hey, come, come work for me. So, you know, I, we've got 200 years of cam grinding and, and, you know, on those machines and, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, and the repair jobs, you know, I mean, you know, that, that's a, that's a big, you know, everybody was turning it away and, and, uh, you know, it, it's, it's a service, you know, you know, and we're making money on it. I'm not, you know, it's capitalism, but you know, people, you can't find that kind of it's right. it's so niche 
that it's uh, it's it's almost not available anymore. Right. You know, well, so we're, we've transitioned to the you just replace it mentality. Right? Exactly. Exactly. And and uh, you know, I mean, obviously nothing beats a brand new semi core. You know, that that's stock based circle and and not a weld. You know, welds only as good as the welder. Right. Um, but you know, but uh, yeah, it, it's uh, it's good to, to you know, and and that's allowing us to to deal. You know, now we're dealing with small block. You know, people are sending us small block Chevy cams. You know, or or whatever. So we're 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 able to see all kinds of different varieties and and you know one thing we're 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 getting into is the is the four liter inline jeep oh, you know okay. because because of the utv you know we're at we're at hammers you know we're we're you we're, more, we're in the segment so, cars so we're starting to yeah. see you know wow you know we should just kind of go get into this jeep market and the jeep market they, they made that engine from the 50s to the early 90s right so it, it is a there is a big production it's a healthy supply <laughs> it is and, and so uh you know and it, it makes sense to 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 do that when we're doing this you, this side by side stuff yeah. you know we just go yeah call it off road and, yeah. and and you know with covid that drove a lot of people to to rvs outdoors it, it travel, drove them outdoors what, what goes with that what goes with rvs one of these you know yeah. and so um yeah i mean everything's kind of trending towards this thing being big i think it's going to be bigger than the sport compact i mean that's my that's my pitch to the big, you know, the V8 guys is, well, if you took this seriously when you didn't believe in it, this is going to be bigger. Right. So, And we're going to be seeing, a, in my opinion, we're going to see a huge influx in the used market over the next course of the year, absolutely. 18 months or whatever. And there's going to be a ton of guys that, like me, if I were to go buy a used Razor or whatever, my first thing in my head is, is how did this guy treat it? I have no freaking clue. Even though he told exactly. me he babied it, it doesn't mean he did. And, and I'm going to have to tear this apart and, and make sure everything's good. And, and it's probably going to turn into replacing some components. Right. And, and if it, I'm in there, like I said earlier, might as well upgrade to something yeah. more reliable, and, stronger, and, and bigger power. And if you power. can get it within a week, you're happy. And, and that makes it, you know, keeps the warm and fuzzy. And you, yep. you get the, you know, and, and, and then, you know. And like my wife, right. if she knew I was spending a bunch of money, she'd be, the first thing she'd ask is like, is it the good stuff? Like, is it going to last? Absolutely. Is it worth it? Right. <laughs> so. Yeah, you don't want to buy disposable anything. But um yeah, the, the, so, you know, what we see happening is, is I don't know when Polaris is going to release, you know, supposed to be Ra Camp Razor, but, you know, Who knows? whatever. But uh, guys with the Turbo S are going to, and then they're going to dump, you yep. know, I don't want to say dump, but they're going to put those on they're the market. Transition. And so you're going to see, you know, we saw the same thing in all of the, you know, all, it, it's just it the way with it the works. It the 900s, and then it happened with the 1000s, and it, it's just it, an evolution. It happens with Toyotas and Hondas and Chevys, and, you know, you just, I mean, you know, you just, people went from the small block 350 Chevy to the LS1, right. you know, and, and, and so, you know, it's just people, that's what, that's what, not everybody, but, but let's say that $25,000 Turbo S, you know, 2020 is now 12 grand. Right. You know, you pay cash for it, whatever. Um. Yeah, you don't know where it's been. You know, maybe right. it's, maybe you get a deal on it because the engine's hurt. I don't know. Right. You know, Submerged but, but or whatever. Uh, exactly. And and so you know, why go stock when you can go aftermarket for you know? It's just it's just the effort and the money and and, and I think people understand the re and realize the the importance of, of understanding that. So uh, we've gone over an hour already. I mean, we all could right. probably talk all yeah. day, but no, it's great. <laughs> it's great to be here. It's I mean, I'm excited. Uh, you know, you, you told me eight o'clock. I was like, no problem. You know, I mean, it, you know, I don't mind getting here early because, uh, like I said, it's uh, it's new. It's exciting. Um, it's growing. Right. Um, you see it just you know every day and and. Uh, yeah, no, I appreciate you having me. And yep. and, uh, and you know. so uh, where can we find you guys online? Uh, and where can we maybe learn some more about, you know, some of these components? A lot of our, our listeners aren't as savvy on the technicality right. of all this. Like, where can they learn some of that stuff? And maybe some of those bigger names that work with you to, you know, work with the customer. Yeah, and I mean, you that. know, we, like I said, we, you know, so the, I mean, we have a lot of information on the websites, runbc.com. Um, Social media is at RunBC. RunBC on Instagram. We post a lot of stuff there. Um, you know, it was, it, the interesting deal is, is, you know, companies are asking, well, if we get into the uh, UTV, should we create a different Instagram account? You know, right. that was always a debate, you know. Right. And I was like, I was like, I, you know, I had the same internal debate in my head. And, and I was like, no, you know what? W w why can't a super guy also have a Can-Am? You right. know, and, and why not? Why? 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 
Why not just mix them in? I mean, we just sell high performance. It doesn't matter what. I mean, <laughs> right. I, I tell people I'll make cams for a lawnmower if, if, if the volume's there. Right. You know, I don't care. Um, but that, yeah, That I mean, gave me a really good idea. We'll make some candy, candy <laughs> lawnmowers. Start I, the saw, racing I saw a guy riding, riding his riding lawnmower driving around here. People are uh -huh. slapping stickers on uh -huh. it. Um, but yeah, um, yeah. I mean, like I said, when when I got into it, I I I I, uh, I recognized you know the, the certain players in there. It's it's not you know some of our bigger dealers um, that are that worked with us in Sport Compact are in it. You know, Real Street, Turn 14. Um, but I, I really love the engine builders. You know the, you know DNMs. You know TPR is is what is is my Greg is is a partner in, in a lot of the stuff that we're doing. We work together on the King bearings. Work together on the Garrett intercooler. And that's something I've noticed. You work really closely with a lot of these premium brands. Not premium in like like they're the highest expensive ones. It's like they make the best stuff here in America that you can put e in your car. Exactly. Well, you know, I mean, I've been doing it a long time, and I can I can smell BS when I, when I, you know, if I, if I see it and, and, uh, you know, we want, like, like I originally said, this is, this is a clean slate of paper. We can, what are we going to create out of this? Yeah. Clean it's up slate? to you what you're going to so build. We so we want, we want to be known as, as that brand, you know, right. the, the Edelbrock of, of, yep. of UTV, you know? And so you got to do it right. I mean, you know, I'm a big believer in first impressions and, you know, we want everything. Tolerance is perfect packaging, the, the whole deal. And, and so, um, yeah, I mean, like I said, you know, whether it's, the, you know, the Evos, the Waylands, the K and T's, you know, DW's, I mean, th there's, um, I mean, I, I could go on and on. I mean, I'm, I'm leaving people out, right. but, um, you know, it, it's a, it's a great segment. Th these people are, uh, you know, they get it. They've been doing, they've been doing it a long time. I appreciate their input, uh, I, their knowledge. Uh, you know, I'm not a, I like to listen. I, I don't think we know everything. And, and if, so, if, if, if more than one person or even, even one person I respect is telling me something, I'm going to listen. And, and if it's something we think is, is worth the change, we'll make it, you know, right. and, and that's how you get better is not well, just, it goes back to how you, know, you were saying you moved your office next to the people you could listen to exactly. to understand the future right. of what you need to be. Right. I mean, and, and we want to just bring value, reliability, performance to the, to the consumer and, uh, you know everything else will fall in line. Right. This is this is just one exciting segment, and you know because it's new, it's uh, you know it's just like I said, it's got me juiced up, and uh, you know I'm the one who goes to these events. You know I, I you know we do drift, we do uh, you know haunted and it's days. It's not just like the higher talent to go man the booth. It's not the booth girls selling this stuff, right? Like you and your guys all know what you're talking about, and if anyone has a question, they can present that question, get a real world answer and a real world product correlation and know what to do going forward. Well, yeah, and, and it all, like I said, it all goes back to kind of, you know, you can, the consumer, if I walk into Best Buy and I know more about the TV than the dude selling it to me, I'm, I'm <laughs> That's like, usually where I'm at. <laughs> you know, whoa, you know, so we, you know, I don't want, I want to know everything about, you know, I mean, two years ago, I didn't know what a Rotax 900 was. Right. You know, I mean, right. I didn't really care. I didn't know what a, you know, I didn't know, uh, you know, who ProStar, well, I didn't know any, anything that was, that was going on in the segment, but. I dove in and, and um, you know, it, I think it's, it's, it's definitely, I mean, it's not like the future of, of automotive racing, but it's, it's the future of, of the hobbyist, the enthusiast. It's, it's easy to get into. It's, it's simple to get into. Right. Um, you know, again, you know, like I said, if, if you're looking to get into it as a manufacturer, you know, the world's your it's, it's Can Am and it's Can Am and, and Razor Turbo. You know, I mean that that covers a lot. But but you know, we are coming out with the Talon cams. You know, we we are coming out with the YXZ cams or the 998 cams. Um, you know, we, we're taking this market serious, and and uh, you know we we know you know with, with the like we talked about with the draggies. You know, we're, we're validating all of our product. You know, I, I, you know it's I'm a big believer in you know getting it in the highest horsepower cars and it, it'll sell all the way down. So, right. um, you know, I, I, you know, it's nice to be able to kind of design a program, you know, from, from the ground up and, right. and, and, you know, with, with the knowledge I've learned over the years and, and, you know, we hit all genres of this segment, you know, and, 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 uh, you know, I think, yeah, I think it, you know, I mean, the future's bright for sure. <laughs> well, I mean, we're seeing it. I used to tell my wife, "Relax, you know, I know what I'm doing, you know, because it's, it's a lot of inventory." And, and uh, yeah, you know, uh, but people don't realize how much you have to invest in inventory alone. 
oh, just well, to make something come off the ground. Yeah, no, it's and and just you know, I mean, like I said a couple years ago, I was like, I bought every engine. I was I was wearing out salvage yards trying because to me, I didn't I didn't care if it had a hole in the block. Right. I just needed to take it apart and see what was going on, you right. know. And so so I I hit up every salvage yard. We bought everything, and and then you know, I mean, we we got into the suspension side with the with the with the ARP bolt kits, and so we so then we had to buy the cars, you know. Right. And so um you know, but. But really, the, the way to do it is, is, you know, we dyno it, we test it, we take it out and, and into the field, we, we test it some more, we give it to some of our engine building partners, say, hey, put it through the ringer, then we release it, you know, right. and that's, 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 how, that's, that's how it should work, and, and uh, you know, the internet, it's, it, it's good and bad, but, you know, if, if you get enough people making power, it, it gets out there, right. and, and if, you, if you're not, it gets out there. Yeah, for sure. Well, <laughs> speaking about getting out there, All right. we got an event to go to yes, and, sir. and support. And I got some filming. You got some talking. And uh, uh, you can find him again, like at runbnc.com. Uh, Run and, yeah. and the social media, you can find our podcast on Apple, uh, iTunes, uh, Google, Spotify, uh, iHeartRadio, all the different places, uh, including uh, YouTube if you're watching us. So uh, thanks for joining us uh, for another episode. And uh, until next time, guys, peace. <laughs>